Hey everybody, so today we got a 40 by 28 garage floor to do with three trench drains. And yes, that's right, Darren's out today. So luckily we got Harvey in today. So I called Harvey to see if he could work. Harvey works for himself, that's him there on the right. And he's basically, he's like calling in an all-star to help work because Harvey can do anything we can do. So with Darren being out, it made a big, big difference having Harvey there today. So everybody say hi to Harvey down in the comments. Um, now this floor has got, like I said, three trench drains and it's got a bunch of different slopes to it. So it's a little bit trickier floor to pour than just your average garage floor that might slope from back to front. This thing slopes from the back to the trench drains from the front to the trench drains and then in between each trench drain it has a high point so we got a bunch of slopes going on here today and it's also about six to seven inches thick which I mean that's not that big a deal but it's just it's a little bit more concrete than your average four inch concrete floor those two deepened area like like the like the video just said is for a car lift he's gonna be putting a car lift in there so he he deepened some areas up now the the tricky thing about today for us was we could only get two concrete trucks and the most they can put on those two concrete trucks legally for us is 21 yards and this thing figured you know at about six and a half inches thick it figured right at 21 yards so we were a little concerned that we might run out of concrete and if we did probably one of these trucks would have to return and that's about a 40 minute ride to bring us a balance and uh, so we were kind of worried we might run out of concrete a quarter of an inch thick over the size of this floor is just about a yard of concrete so it doesn't take much to to suck up a whole yard of concrete being off with the subgrade a little bit now we'll, what we'll do is we'll get this first truck right emptied get him out of the way and then we'll start screeding him so we can get the second truck backed in get him mixed up and get him ready to go it's not going to really take us that long to screed half of this floor. I mean, just it probably takes longer to dump the concrete out of the truck than it does to actually screed it. The tricky thing is, it's just when we're shooting our grades, we want to make sure all our grades are correct. So all the slopes we have are right where they need to be. So right now we're striking that pad, and that pad right there is three quarters of an inch lower than the back wall over there to the right where the where the laser box is sitting. So the floor is sloping from the back wall to the trench drains about an inch and a half. So when I shoot my grades, you know, I, I gotta make sure all my grades are set right. And then we'll screed that that half over there to the right and then we'll move over and we'll screed the part from where Luke is there. Luke's the guy on the left down to the trench drains. You can see how much of a help it, it is having Harvey there f for raking the concrete. Without Harvey there, you know, me and Luke would have to be stopping and starting quite a bit more. So I'm just double checking the height of my drains. And then I'm going to make a wet pad right in between the two. Right in between the two garage doors there because we want a high point there. So I raise that up about a half an inch higher than the drains. And then it'll the floor will slope to both sides of the the doors so there's no puddles in between the drains and then that's what Luke is striking right now with this with the small screed so we do these a lot I mean this they're a little bit more difficult in the fact that you just want to make sure all your slopes are correct you know you do you really don't want to mess one of these up for the customer they have uh, they, they did a lot of pre-planning and they want this thing a certain way so you just want to make sure all your slopes are good you don't want any low spots where they, they don't need to be and you don't want any puddles in the floor after the floor is all done and it gets wet you know you want all the water to run to the drains that's what they're paying us to do so we make sure that we take a little extra care when we shoot these grades to make sure that everything's perfect I like when you know personally for me I like the trench drains more in the center of the garage so the middle the whole bay kind of slopes towards the center of the garage 
what, what do you guys like? If you guys were going to put a trench drain in your garage, would you like them closer to the doors like this, or would you want them more in the center of the garage? Let me know down in the comments. Also, you guys who guess, why, why do you think Darren's out today? <laughs> if you can guess why you think he's out, I'll give you a little prize. Uh, let me know down in the comments why you think he's out. There could be, Darren's never out. I mean, he's just never out. Ne and neither is Luke, really. So, for him not to be here today, there had to be a really good reason. So, if you can guess down in the comments, let me know. And if you guess it right, I'll, I'll send you something like a sweatshirt or a t-shirt and a sweatshirt or something like that, a hoodie. So, uh, try to guess down in the comments. So Luke's over there with the five foot screed, you know, screeding from the garage door down to the trench drain to make sure that slope is perfect. There's about an inch pitch right there and it was actually about four and a half feet. So that's, that's quite a bit of slope in just four feet. And then it was an inch and a half pitch in the, in the, from the back of the garage to the front, which was about 24 feet. So that's, that's not really that much slope. So that's pretty easy to do. Now the first truck's dumped, and you can see we were, I thought, I was feeling pretty comfortable after the first truck, you can see halfway through that door was halfway, so we're a little bit over halfway with that first truck. So it's looking pretty good as far as the concrete goes, that we're going to have enough, we're not going to run out. What we'll do is, we get this second truck mixed up, we'll dump out about 90% of him just to make sure that we're going to have enough, and that way... If we, if we did think we were going to run out, then we would just order the balance and have that first truck bring it back. So we'd let the batch man know just as soon as we knew. I'm over there kind of messing with that other trench drain, making sure the end of that other load was sloped correctly. Because this stuff's, they're, we're using warm water now. It's, it's kind of chilly up here where we are. We're in Maine. It's, it's. The end of October, 1st of November, the mornings are pretty chilly. They're in the 40s. So the bat, what the batchman does is he just turns on the boiler for the guys pouring floors in the morning. So he'll have about 100 degree water. And then sometimes, depending on the temperatures for the day, we'll even put some more accelerator in that just to get it going. Once that concrete cools off, once you lay it down and it cools off, you know, if it's 50 degrees out that day, it's still not going to set up that fast, but it, it does help give it a little kick in the morning. So we, after we'd got that 90% dumped out, we left a little hole there in case we were high. We were confident we were going to have plenty. We'll get, we'll get it screeded now. You can see Javi can even screed. He's been doing concrete for a long, long time. So he really knows what he's doing. He could he could do floors like this himself too, probably. We only hand screed or kick screed floors like this with this much slope. We don't typically use a vibra screed on anything that's got a bunch of slopes to it. We just like we know when we can hand screed that the slopes are gonna be perfect. We're not going to have any high points and low points. As long as we follow the pads, we're not going to create anything that shouldn't be there. Whereas a Vibra Screed, there's always a slight chance you could create a little bit of a hump or a dip and not really know it. So we just want to make sure that doesn't happen on a floor like this. You know, I'm going right around that other trench drain in the center bay. I'm striking my pad back up to the high point. And then I'll screed up to that high point. It was raining when we got here this morning too. It was, it was downpour. We didn't even get out of the truck for about 15 or 20 minutes. It was raining so hard. The weather forecast called for showers early in the morning, which was about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning for, for us when we got here. And then it just for it to be kind of cloudy the rest of the day, not really rainy, but just cloudy. So 
we were, you know, it's always a chance, right? You always take a chance when you when you order concrete and pour these floors outside when there's showers. You're hoping the, the weatherman's going to be right and you don't get caught in the rain. But we did. We got lucky today, and it did stop, and it didn't rain again, so it made the finishing process pretty easy. So Luke's going to finish up over there around that drain. I'll get this bowl floated. And it's feeling pretty good at this point. He's going to finish sloping that down to that drain. So there's three trench drains in this thing. And that just made the floor a little more difficult than normal. What do you guys think? I mean, when you have a bunch of drains like this in one garage, do you think it's more difficult? Do you think it's just as easy? I mean, we do a lot of them. It's, it's definitely... It's definitely not that really that hard for us because we've done so many. But I'm just comparing to a floor that might just slope from back to front. We do probably more floors for garages that just have a slope to them from back to front without a trench drain. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think as far as the, le the degree of difficulty. Easy, medium, or hard. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know why you think Darren's out, and we'll see you on the next one.